back, and uh, boy, that was uh, that was that was something. That's a that's a good movie. Um, did you notice there was no music in the movie whatsoever, as zero, um, except for the beginning credits and then afterwards. Uh, and I, I, I didn't notice it the first time I watched it. I, I noticed it today because I knew about it. But uh, very very interesting. Uh, there are some other movies that'll come up where there are no there's no music, but. Uh, uh, the, this this was uh, how could there be music? They're out on a boat in the middle of the ocean, and uh, you know I'd be interested to get feedback from uh, our viewers. Um, did that feel claustrophobic? Not not to me. You know that that really was uh, filmed in a million different ways. What a challenge! I mean, what a challenge to set out and, and film this movie uh, strictly from the perspective of a boat. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, we saw some Brandy, which was cool. I read something today that uh, 53 movies he made, 51 of them have Brandy in it, so uh, that sounds about right. Uh, so, the controversy. Well, number one, uh, Steinbeck was not happy with this film when he saw it. He uh, demanded to have his name taken off of it. Probably, well, who knows why, who knows what John Steinbeck's politics were, but uh, it, it certainly doesn't resemble the story. His story that he wrote his vision for this idea was to have a single person on the lifeboat and be going through his thoughts. So, you know, when you turn it on and it's John Steinbeck's lifeboat, it's not. I mean, it was written by several other people. And uh, it must be weird to see something like that years afterwards that someone's saying, oh, I really loved your movie Lifeboat. And he's like, I had nothing to do with it. But, but uh, yeah, he, uh, he felt that the parts of the movie were racist and uh, didn't like the portrayal of the uh, African-American uh, you know, we were just commenting that we've seen a lot of movies as we've gone along from 1927 up until now, 1944, in this past uh, six or seven months. And most of the time when you're seeing an African American in these films, they're the butler. They're a servant and they don't have any role, much to contribute. And uh, this, is, this was different from that, so, so good for Hitchcock and the team for, for, for doing that. But uh, uh, the other bit of controversy, and, and one of the reasons the, the, the critics anyways had a real problem with this movie, is you, you kind of had the, the German um, as a likable Nazi. And uh, boy, with some people, I, I'm not sure they understood what they were seeing. They, they really saw this, this Superman, and he was better than... Uh, than the Allies were, that the British and the American people in the boat, and he was stronger, and and uh, and, and they didn't like to see that. Um, but uh, you know, just talking real quick about our, our Hitchcock Hitchcock thing, the, the villain always was charming. The villain always was a good guy, and deep down he was evil. But but uh, you know, the people at the time who criticized this movie, they they didn't get it. I mean, what movie were they watching? He was he was hoarding water. He had. Food. He had pills. Of course, he was in. Plus, he—they don't let anybody be a, a, a captain of a, of a submarine. I mean, obviously, the guy had been at sea for years. He was prepared. And as Diane pointed out, that's the point: is that that you know this this uh, at this war, if, if that country of Germany was prepared, that's what you're going to get when you go to, to battle with these guys. If you're not prepared, and at the time when they were making this in 1943. Uh, France had been conquered, lots of countries had been conquered, the Allies weren't doing very well. Let's get our act together, guys, and, and this is how we're going to... And not only that, but we were just reading an article from the New York Times that reviewed this movie at the time, and the New York Times article got it and said that, yeah, of course he's stronger, and, and he, he got to this bit of power by uh, lies and treachery, so, so, and, and fraud. So, so yeah, the, 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 the subtleness is not lost on us, and you know, we have uh, 70 years of hindsight. But uh, certainly, you know, as, as a war movie goes, this, this one is very, very special in that, uh, uh, you know, it is not your typical ally propaganda era, World War II era movie where everybody in the film who's German, bad. Everybody in the film who's British, American, or Canadian is good. Uh, this, this had lots and lots of blurry areas and gray areas. I mean, why did he offer to help Gus? Why did he offer to, to cut his leg off? Because he's probably a good guy and, and uh, it makes it very, very watchable today, these, these many, many years later, because, you know, they weren't all monsters. They were just people caught up in the, in the moment. So, uh, uh, and imagine for a second if, uh, if, 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 if the, the tables were turned and if Willie was an American in a German lifeboat. You know, we'd be applauding his actions. We'd be thinking, yeah, you know, hide that water and, and get them to the whatever. So it, so it, it is a very, very good movie in that regard and uh, has, has lasted. But certainly controversial. That is not what, what people wanted to talk about at the time because the war was very much in doubt and it was a very scary time. So uh, 
I get it. Uh, but we're watching it now, and we're kind of judging it now. And right now, it's it's awesome. So uh, very cool. Casablanca, who we raved about, uh, uh, you know, a few weeks ago. That's a that's a great movie. But you got to admit, all the Germans in it are bad, and everybody else is good, and, and what have you. So uh, so there you go. Um, you know uh, that that cameo was was brilliant. It would happen at 25 minutes if you didn't see it. Uh, it it's where uh, and, and and Alfred Hitchcock was quoted as saying that that was his favorite cameo, and it was certainly the most creative. How are you going to get him on the lifeboat? He thought about being one of the the actors in it. He thought about being a, a dead body floating by the water, but pretty sure he didn't want to get into the water. Uh, interesting thing about that cameo too, because it was showing an ad for uh, an imaginary product called Reducto, uh, showing a man going from uh, big, big fat to, to slimmer. Uh, he actually underwent uh, a, a big change in his body size. He he dropped during this period in 1943. He dropped 100 pounds. He went from being just under 300 pounds to about 200 pounds. So that was you know that what you saw were, were pictures of Alfred Hitchcock. So uh, very interesting. Um, so this is the last picture, this is the only picture he'll do for uh, 20th Century Fox, so I guess we'll have to wait till next week to see where uh, he gets loaned out to next, but um, yeah, that, that was really good, we really enjoyed that one, really interested to see your, your feedback as to, uh, as to what you thought, so uh, 1944, we're done now with 1944, uh, one best picture in 1944 was the movie Going My Way with uh, Barry Fitzgerald and... Uh, Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. Wow. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, charming, funny. We didn't really finish it. It's a long movie. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen it. It's it's all, it's on all the time. Uh, it's okay. A really good movie from 1944 is Double Indemnity, which is a great film noir, the film noir ever. Uh, well, that's not true, but we love it with Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray. 1944, great movie. So. Uh, so good. We're, uh, and, and like I said, Hitchcock got uh, a nomination for Best Director. Uh, I think he gets five nominations. Uh, he said three. He was nominated for Best Director for Rebecca, for Foreign Correspondent, his first two movies made uh, in Hollywood. He gets nominated for this one. Uh, he gets nominated for Best Director for Psycho and um, uh, Rear Window, I think. So, uh, anyways, uh, things to look forward to. I told you that the Oscar train was, was pretty much drying up, and, and it's true. We've got 24 more movies to go, and uh, this is pretty much it. So, so good. Okay, so we're done with this one. Uh, looking forward to your feedback. We're having lots of fun uh, doing it. We're at the halfway point. Probably, we're probably going to do about 48 movies, and this is movie number 24. So, uh, so good. So, uh, now next week, uh, we're going we're gonna to do two movies that he made in 19, or released in 1944, uh, that... Uh, uh, they were they were propaganda films made uh, for, for the British Ministry of Information during the war. Propaganda films for the French people. Uh, the movies themselves never saw the light of day until uh, the 80s and the 90s. So it's complicated, but it's it's worthwhile seeing. We'll watch both of them next week. So uh, get those on your Netflix and um, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. So uh, until then, uh, we'll, we'll we'll see you then. So from our couch to yours, we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.